Hello everyone, today I will show you how to replace the brake discs and the brake pads on BMW E60. So this is quite a simple job, it doesn't require um, high knowledge to be honest, so I think uh, all of you should be able to do that. How you can know that your brake pads or brake discs are worn? So as example, if you would remove your wheel and you will see that the brake disc is black, it means that it's born and in this case it's not gonna break as it should. Also when you're braking and you feel like uh, the brake pedal is just going slowly like bumping, it might mean that uh, the brake disc no longer is straight or the brake pads just getting worn. Um, on this movie you will see how the brand new brake discs and the brake pad looks like, so if you will do visual inspection of your brake disc and brake pads you will know roughly how much life you got left. For this job you will need something like this tool. So this tool will allow you to push back the piston which is located in the brake caliper because the brake uh, disc will be bigger because it's brand new also brake uh, pads will be also bigger. Everything will be just wider so your brake no longer will be able to um, hold it so you'll have to push back also when you will replace your brake disc and brake pads you will have to do visual inspection of your uh, piston just to see on the rubber if there is no leakage if uh, the piston is not damaged just simple inspection it's, it's not much in case if your piston is broken then you might have different problems with your braking so as example if you feel like when you're releasing the braking and you feel like one side is releasing quicker than other it means that possibly your piston is not releasing uh, the brake properly so in this case you will have to clean it clean it or even replace the piston if this is what you will have to do then there is another movie on my channel where you can see it so just check my channel and and, and you will see this movie so for this job I'm using the brake pad and brake disc of one brand but it's, it doesn't mean that I'm recommending it it's it's up to you guys w whatever you're gonna use I'm using this you can use whatever you like so anyway let's get to the job now if you're gonna replace first the front brake discs and brake pads as I'm doing afterwards I will do the um, rear ones I would definitely recommend anyway to be on the flat surface because in if not then your car can slide because when you will be replacing the rear you will have to release the handbrake because handbrake is inside of your brake disc and this will just hold it so you will have to release it for now i'm replacing the front one my surface is flat so it doesn't matter which gear i'm gonna press press but if let's say you got slightly surface like this you have to press the reverse gear if your surface is like this slightly like this don't go into too heavy angle then you have to press the first gear it's just that if you are on the first gear car should go forward so we're not gonna go back so just opposite of whatever direction you know the angle is so for myself it doesn't matter i will leave this on the first gear put the handbrake now we're gonna open the bonnet and from there we're gonna remove the air filter and get to the place where you're adding your brake fluid we will have to open the nut just to allow airflow when we're gonna squeeze the piston. In other case, if you got any weak point of your braking system, it might not survive the pressure and just can brake. So always you have to open uh, the airflow. So when you're squeezing, it will push everything up a little bit. So it will allow you to safely squeeze your piston and put the new brakes. So on the front of your engine, you are untidying the holder for the filter. This is the first thing, you disconnecting the sweep plug, it's done, then the filter, if filter will not come off, then it is held by small, you see here, there is a wee holder, which you will have to unlock, in my case, it's unlocked anyway, so it doesn't bother. Now when this is gone, you will have to pull this one, and this will allow you to push out the security. Afterwards, you unlocking this nut, that one, that one, and there is one here. They are plastic, so it doesn't require much force to be unlocked. Afterwards, there should be one screw here. I don't have it because I'm doing quite a lot of uh, jobs on the car, so I don't have it. Now, there is a rubber mount which go all the way through, so you have to remove half of it. You don't need to remove the, all of it. And there is also this wee water drain which you have to also take out. So with this gone, you will be able to lift that. So you're just lifting this in the middle part and then sliding it out. And you got access to the place where you're adding your brake fluid. So you're just untidying it and leaving it open. 
as I said, this will allow when you're gonna squeeze the piston to raise level of the fluid and it's not gonna leave enough pressure to break your pipes, should not leave enough pressure to break your pipes. Now you are using your jack to leave the car, not by much, just a little bit. If you cannot lift your, I would recommend to use something like that, not the ordinary jack. But if you cannot squeeze the ordinary jack, I mean this one, use the standard one just to leave the car a little bit and then this will allow you to put the bigger jack. Now, when you remove the nuts, you can use the power tool if you like on those nuts. Don't use the power tool on the security nut because security nut can get damaged. So what you will have to do is uh, lose those two and you can remove those three and then you're lifting car properly high up. Now after taking out the wheel, I would recommend to leave it under the car. I don't believe that this will drop, but just in case it's better that this will stop in your, your wheel and then you can jack the uh, car back up. So this is always what I do, just in, in case. It never fell, but it's better to be um, safe than sorry. Next step will be to remove the security for brake caliper. So you're pressing your screwdriver here and this will be lifted. And then it is coming off. You have to take flat screwdriver and here on the back of the caliper, there is a wee cap, which you will have to push by the screwdriver. And the second one is on the bottom here. I hope you can see it here. So you have to push them out because inside there are two screws that we have to unlock. We're using key T45 to remove those two screws which are located inside of this chamber and the other one underneath. Now with those long screws gone, remember the long one is the bottom, the top one is the shorter one. With them gone, you can use the screwdriver to work out on the bottom and also on the on the top. And this will this will come off. Now in my case it's stuck quite badly, so I will have to do something else. So you see the key size 18, I use the bigger key to actually unlock this one. And there is another one on the bottom as well. It's there. So I have to unlock those two. So the way how I did it, it's not easy to take them out, believe me. So what I've done, I added the key like this on the bottom and then to unlock it, you have to push it out. So I was pushing this against my knee to give extra power but you have to be really careful to keep it straight. So you have to add this key 18 exactly on the top of the nut, like all the way through down, because if not, you can round up the nut and you're just gonna mess up the jab. So make sure that this is all the way down. And when you're pressing this up on this side, the second hand is holding this on this end, to making sure that the key is straight, to not damage this nut. Be careful with that. Now when the brake caliper is off, you can see that this came out completely off, so there was nothing to hold it, that was just basically the brake, uh, brake disc. Now you have to use the screwdriver to push out this one and then pull this other uh, brake pad, the old ones. Thing, remember to not leave brake uh, caliper just hanging, because you can damage uh, the pipe and then you can get some leakage. So always leave something underneath, so it's not gonna just go hanging. Also, now you can see the difference between the brand new uh, brake pads and the second hand one, the second hand, the used ones that uh, I had. So you can see that it's basically, they were not so bad. They were like halfway through. So it was still some life in them. The issue is with the brake disc. It's completely worn out. It's really, you know, eaten by rust. The car was standing for some time, so it just got uh, broken. So this had to be replaced. But when you replace the brake disc, then also you should replace the brake pads. That's why I'm doing it. Now with that, you have to inspect and see if the piston is not damaged. So you have to go around, clean a little bit of piston, make sure that rubber doesn't leakage anywhere. Also check uh, the back pipe which provides the brake fluid, if there is no damage on it as well, because this might need to be replaced. And if everything is fine, then we have to replace, replace, remove the brake disc. Now using key T40, you are removing this screw and this will completely release the brake disc. So now we're gonna take it out. Now with the brake disc gone, before we're gonna put the new one, we have to use the metal brush to clean 
the place before we're gonna put the new brake disc. Also, ideally, if you have copper, then you will add copper on top of this, just to make it easier to be taken out in the future. So now when it's clean all around and the copper is added to it, now we can add the new brake disc. So make sure that you're adding this in the way where this, uh, the fifth, you see this is for securing the wheel, but this one it's for securing the brake disc. So make sure that you're aligning all the holes in the right way. Now when you add it to your brake disc, ah, one more thing, remember that this will have to be, um, secure this with the copper, you know, take the copper a little bit on the screw, add this in, and this will help you to remove this next time, because if not, then it might get rusty, and when this is gonna get rusty, it might can break, or might be hard to be taking out. Also, if any chances you will damage this screw or any other screws, replace it, because this part is usable. This is not part that you're gonna have always and forever. In few years time, you will have to take it out anyway. So make sure that you look after those screws, because if not, then you might have big problems next time. Also, if you got any kind of grease anywhere, same as me, I have the, uh, the copper here. If you got any grease, use the brake cleaner to take it out, because this is very important, especially on the first stage, because brakes not gonna break too well because they will have to work with together like brake pads with brake disc. So make sure that this is completely clear so you're gonna have proper um, adjusting of the brakes. Like, you know. Now, after you did inspection of your piston and you see that there is no damage on the outer part, because what's happening? Your brake pads, the old one, they were slightly smaller, so piston was coming out quite deeply. Because you're gonna place now bigger brake disc and also um, wider brake pads, this will have to go in. So if you got any damage here on the side of metal, you see this metal part, then this might cause the leakage from the piston. So make sure that you inspect this and make sure that there is no damage. In my case, it was only dirt, so it's all right. So now what I have to do is use uh, this tool to push in the piston into the system. And make sure that this remain open because this have to push the fluid in and if you're gonna create too much tension, too much pressure in the system, this might cause damage, especially because you're gonna replace not only this side, but also the other side. So make sure that you do this right. Now what you have to do is add your brake pads into your caliper. So this brake pad go into the side of the piston. So this is this side. You see the piston is like completely back up, so you got plenty space. So you adding this, just by, look how it looks like. You see this is the top, this is the bottom. So you're just add, adding it. The other side, again, you're just squeezing it in. So you're taking this, squeezing it a little bit, and pushing it in. I cannot really do this by one hand, but it's coming on quite easily. With this done, next step, gonna be to add this frame back in. So this frame will come, one second the way around this way up so it's this way up you adding this like that on the back and then you adding those two screws that we took out and remember to put copper inside of the on the screws so it's not gonna be hard to take it out next time now what we have to do it's after adding this part we putting back the caliper all the way through and then we have to add those two screws remember the short one is on the top and the long one is on the bottom. So with them two in the place, just tie them up so this is gonna, this is gonna go all the way through. Now you have to secure the caliper, so it's not easy. You have to squeeze this behind this part on this end and also do the same on the bottom. Ah, my glove. So it's like here and over there as well. And then when you will have it done, you have to push it in by the screwdriver and squeeze this over there. So I will show you in a second how it looks like when it's in. To be honest, this one was the hardest part. So you have to put this behind this one and also behind that one. And then use the screwdriver here to push it, like, you know, pull it out and squeeze it here in this place. So what I've done, I have to press the brake 
just to push the piston slightly higher so this part will come closer to me and that was uh, easier without doing it that was just impossible that was mission impossible literally so i will say that th that was actually the hardest part of the whole job which i did just now so the last bit that you have to do is just add the copper here then add the copper on your uh, screws and put back the wheel and then you have to do the same all the thing which we did here on the other side i'm not gonna do the other side on the camera because basically this is the same steps exactly the same steps as we did just now but uh, i will show you how to do the rear brakes the last bit that might not be too obvious for some of you guys which might be doing this for the first time when you're adding the wheel and you're tightening it in you're doing first screw the other one the other one the other one the other one you're doing this across so don't go one two three four you have to do this like this side then across then across then across and then across don't do this like one by one have to be you know opposite sides for the rear brake you're taking screwdriver and placing it here to release this this hole this is much easier than the front brakes and then afterwards we're doing the same thing as we did previously so we pull up this wheat plug, the other one which is in the bottom as well and then using T45 we're taking out this screw and the bottom one. Now after releasing those two we have to release again those two. The bottom one didn't want it to come out at all so I have to use, I know that I should not use this key because it's a, it's a special use key but uh, because this didn't want it to go at all with this, it actually went through quite easily. So um, you can use it as a, you know, idea. If you got any any of those keys, then basically it's much easier to take out the bottom one because access is hard and it's really hard to, you know, it's very easy to round the the nut and you don't want that. So with this, I've managed to get it loose very easily. So uh, this one was easy, but the bottom one was hard. The access is harder. So you know. If you got one of those keys, then you can use it. So after that caliper is coming off easily, and then what we have to do, you can use the hammer just to bang this side a little bit. So this part of the caliper, not caliper, sorry, brake pad will come out. And the other one is just a matter of uh, pushing it. You can use it, you can do it by the finger or anything. This one is coming off easily. This one is a bit harder. I mean, on, on my end. On your end, you might put the screwdriver and then the hammer and just bang it a little bit so it will come through as well. And then afterwards, we have to again untie this nut and then it's gonna be a different step because we will have to release the handbrake because handbrake is holding inside of this uh, brake disc, which means that if you will not release the brake um, for the handbrake, you're not gonna be able to take it out. So make sure that your car is very stable, it's flat, you got a wheel under the car because in other case, you know, it might fail. So make sure. And also when you release the brake, just control it. If car will start to move, right away put it back. Got to mention, um, on my car, on the front left side, I had a brake sensor. So you have to disconnect this. Make sure that you disconnect this before you're gonna take out the brake pad. And here on the rear right side is also the sensor. So it's just a matter of pulling it out, that's all. So you're just pulling it out and uh, on the end of the job when you will place everything new, you will just slide this back in. But when everything will be, you know, back, then you will add this in, not before. As previously, make sure to inspect the caliper, how it looks like, especially the piston. You see, my one have a wee damage here. What I mean, if this damage will be deeper, which will go any higher, then when your piston will push down because your uh, brakes and uh, you know everything is new then basically it might cause a leakage this not gonna cause a leakage is quite um, quite small but i think next time around when i will be doing the brakes i would replace the piston as well if in your case this will be quite deep then i would recommend to replace the piston if you look on my channel then i have another movie where i explain how to do that it's not very heavy job but you know it will take you some time and ideally you should have some support of second person because uh, it will be easier for you so anyway um, my one is fine I will say with those you don't have to worry because uh, this is not gonna cause any leakage so it's fine only the damages on the side they are they are the most important so you should look for for those 
So after losing those screw, you will be able to wibble the brake disc and take it out. But remember that to take it out, you have to release the handbrake. So your car have to be pretty solid flat. And when you're releasing it, go step by step by step to observe the car because in other case it can slide out. So, you know, make sure you do this right. When you take it out, again, as before, you have to clean it. And then after cleaning it, we're gonna put the new uh, brake disc. Now, after you added the new brake disc in, wibble it about just to make sure that it will fit in. You can punch it a little bit on the bottom just to, you know, went through. Then make sure that this went through all the way through on every single place, because that's very important. Tie this up and then engage the handbrake just in case because you know remember it's quite dangerous to work and tie the screws and everything when your handbrake is not on so after doing this engage the handbrake so with piston all the way all the way back in we're taking our um, our brake pads and the one with this goes to the side of the piston and the other one which is just simple one without anything on the back go to the other side so the one with holder to the piston, other one over there. Using key T45, we put back those screw, this one and the bottom one over there. Now we are putting back uh, what is it? the nuts that protects them, the bottom one as well. And then we are connecting the brake sensor, which goes into the brake pad. Doesn't want to come out, come in. To be honest, I don't really see it when I'm holding my phone, so I will leave it for now. So anyway, this is the whole job. Now we just have to add this security here, which is very straightforward, it's not so hard as on the front. And this is it. So the second wheel will be exactly the same. And then after work is done, you have to again, close the nut um, for the brake fluid on the front of the car, under the bonnet then add the filter holder back, the filter and everything just the same way as we took this out. It's very straightforward. So anyway, I hope that uh, you enjoy this movie. To be honest, I'm quite tired because today is very hot, but I hope you enjoy the movie and that this will be useful for you guys. So thank you for watching and I wish you a good day.